have you ever noticed that there are parts of you that you're not exactly proud of? You know those bits that you'd rather keep on the wraps? You see, hidden away within each of us is a secret side, something we don't often talk about or even want to admit to ourselves. We like to believe that we are self-aware, that we have completely mapped out the entirety of our minds, heart, and our souls. Yet this belief is more of an illusion a comforting narrative we tell ourselves to navigate the complexities of human relationships and our internal landscapes. In our daily lives, we wear masks, we play roles, and present versions of ourselves that fit into the neat, acceptable boxes society has created. According to Freud, every human has three constructs or components to their personality. The id, the ego, and the superego. It's like having three voices in your head playing different roles at different times. The id is that part of your personality that is all about instant gratification. It's like that little voice that urges you to go for what you want right here, right now. Whether that's food, sleep, or anything else that satisfies basic desires and needs. The id does not care about rules or social norms. It just focuses on seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. Then there's the ego. Think of it as the sensible one in the group. It's all about finding a middle ground, trying to make the eats demand fit into the real world without stepping on too many toes. The ego is you in the driver's seat, navigating through life's traffic with an eye on the rules, the road, and the destination. It's that part of you that weighs the options, makes decisions, and faces the everyday challenges head on. Now the superego represents your moral compass or your conscience. Think of it as your inner critic, your inner judge, holding up a moral compass to guide you through right and wrong. The superego strives for perfection, judges your actions, and pushes you to behave in morally acceptable ways. It's that part of you that feels guilty when you do something wrong and proud when you live up to your ideals. Together, these three are constantly in conversation shaping our actions, guiding our decisions, and making us into these complex beings that we are. It's like having a mini society living right inside our heads. Imagine your mind is like a car with th three different drivers, right? Each wanting to take the wheel and drive in their own direction. The id is like the car's engine, you know, raw and powerful. Think of it as your inner child who wants everything right now, like craving ice cream for dinner or wanting to buy something expensive without thinking about your budget. The ego is the actual driver, trying to navigate the road responsibly. You see, the ego makes compromises, like maybe you can have a little ice cream after a healthy dinner or save up to buy that expensive thing you want. It's all about balancing what you want with what's possible and reasonable. Now the super ego is like the backseat driver or a GPS that constantly tells you the best way to drive based on the rules and moral guidelines. It's your conscience reminding you of what's right and wrong, like saying it's not okay to eat ice cream all the time or to buy things you can't afford. The journey of our ego starts pretty early on, right when we're kids, you know, trying to figure out how to mesh what we want with what the world around us expects. It's a key time that really sets the stage for who we be become. As we navigate through childhood, we are like little sponges soaking up cues from our parents, friends, and everything happening around us. This isn't just about figuring out who we are when we are by ourselves. It's about understanding where we fit in the bigger picture. So as we get older, the way we balance our inner desires with the world's demands gets a bit more toned down a bit more refined. We learn tricks and strategies for handling challenges, reaching our goals and connecting with people. This growth doesn't just happen, it's built on all the feedback and lessons we've picked up along the way. It's like our personality is this vibrant tapestry woven from our experiences, choices and how we react to the world around us. When we step out into the world, we often put on a sort of mask showing off only certain sides of ourselves to fit into different places and relationships. Think of it as wearing different hats for different roles. You know, whether you're at work, with friends, or at a family gathering. You see, this mask or persona is like our public face, 
carefully chosen to meet was expected of us and to get to get along smoothly with others yet locking beneath this mask is something deeper something Carl Jung the psychoanalyst called the shadow it's a collection of everything we talk away traits desires and memories that don't really jive with the persona we're showing to the world this could be bits of us that we're not too proud of or simply feel don't match up well with how we want to be seen imagine keeping certain thoughts or feelings on the wraps because they don't fit the image we're trying to project that's our shadow at play holding on to all those tucked away parts of us for example, imagine you always want to seem happy and easy going around your friends because you think that's what they like. But sometimes you might feel sad or angry and you hide those feelings deep inside. That's part of your shadow. Those sad and angry parts you don't let anyone see because you're worried it might change how they see you. But let's consider a scenario where you strongly associate yourself with say traits of kindness and generosity. Still, at the same time, you tend to suppress any feelings of selfishness or envy. By doing so, you push these attributes into the shadow. These feelings of selfishness or envy don't just disappear. They continue to influence your behavior and choices in subtle ways that often go unnoticed. Sometimes the shadow comes out in ways we do not expect. For example, if you ever find yourself getting really upset over something small, like someone making a casual comment that makes you feel way angrier than it should. That's your shadow showing itself. It's like it's saying, hey, there are feelings here you're not dealing with. This happens because those hidden parts of ourselves don't just disappear. They find other ways to get our attention. So let's take a look at how our shadows can sneak into our daily lives. It's really fascinating how it shows up in things we do and the way we interact with others often without even realizing it. So the first way the shadow expresses itself sometimes is through repression and denial. You see, recognizing the shadow in ourselves and others involves understanding how our earliest experiences shape the part of us we choose to hide. Think about it. When we were kids, we expressed emotions freely, whether the emotion was acceptable or unacceptable. Our natural impulses led us to act selfishly at times, you know, desiring all our parents' attention and then having to deal with the fact that that's impossible. They can't always give us attention because, you know, we have to share this attention with our siblings. Our parents were our first teachers about what's, you know, socially acceptable, you know, praising us for some things and also disciplining us for others. They were aiming to shape us into, you know, kids who played well with others and made them proud. And it wasn't just about making our parents happy. As we got older, the approval shifted from our parents to our friends and our teachers in school. Suddenly, fitting in became the name of the game, pushing us to dial down on those parts of ourselves that didn't quite fit the mold. You see, repressing the shadowy parts of ourselves is not easy. It actually takes a lot of effort. Sometimes this can lead to actions that don't really match up with how we usually see ourselves or want others to see us. For example, think about someone who has always been the standard of morality. You know, the holier than thou folks, the too good to be true folks, suddenly getting tangled up in a scandal, right? Or say, you know, the big advocate of, let's say free love, coming off as surprisingly controlling. But there's that person who is the embodiment of calm and collected, who out of nowhere, snaps and say something really cutting and hurting we might brush these moments off as just being stressed or having a bad day but what's really happening is a bit of our hidden self peeking through it's like this part of us we've tried to keep in the dark are looking for any chance to jump into the light denial is another way our shadow creeps up on us you know when someone goes out of their way to say they don't really care what people think but deep down you can tell they actually pay attention and are pretty bothered by what people think or for example take someone who is really vocal about negative views on something like homosexuality who might actually be trying to deal with their own feelings on the matter wrestling with their own sexuality this kind of denial isn't just about keeping things from others it's often us trying to dodge truths about ourselves that we are not ready to face 
especially those bits that might not get the best reception from society. The thing is, the stronger the denial, the more it's likely signaling something we've pushed way down deep. It's like denial's job is to bring to light what we've tried to keep in the dark. Owning up to parts of us we're not so proud of, like our hidden motives or, you know, those moments when we're not our best selves is really tough. Let's face it, we all have times when we feel a bit too needy, a little too into ourselves and narcissistic, or even downright very hostile. These feelings are just part of being human, but admitting to them, that's where it gets really tricky. We all have this idea of who we want to be, and facing up to our flaws can feel like we're falling short. Take neediness, for example. It puts us face to face with our fears of not being enough on our own. You know, challenging that strong, independent image we like to show the world. Or consider being narcissistic or or vain and our craving for others to look up to us. It's a bit of a taboo to talk about wanting admiration, especially when we are all supposed to value modesty. And then there's anger. Society tells us to keep a lead on anger, even though it's a natural emotion we all feel. You see, facing up to these sides of us that we are not so proud of is so hard and it's not easy. A big part of the struggle is worrying about how others will see us and dealing with the tug of war going on inside ourselves. It takes a good deal of self-awareness and bravery to really dig into who we are. It's like we've told ourselves a certain story about who we are and now we we are finding there's more to the plot. This journey of self-discovery means we have to bridge the gap between who who we think we are and who we show to the world. It's a challenge, sure, but it's also a path to becoming more genuinely ourselves. Another way the shadow expresses itself is through projection. Projection is the most common way the shadow finds expression. What we reject in ourselves, we project onto others. What we dislike in ourselves, we often see in others. Not as a reflection, but as a mirror of our own inner struggles, our own inner conflicts. For example, if you strongly dislike someone for their arrogance, it might be useful to ask yourself if a part of you fears being seen as arrogant. Or perhaps deep down you wish you could express confidence as freely as they do. This isn't to say that the person isn't displaying arrogance, but your intense reaction to it might be more about you than them. Shadow projection kind of works like this, right? Imagine there are parts of yourself you are not exactly proud of. So you try to shove them into the back of your mind. But instead of just keeping them hidden, you end up spotting these traits that you don't like in yourself in other people more than you do in yourself, right? It's like our own way of saying, hey, it's it's not me with the issues, it's them. You see, this trick lets us keep having to face those not so great parts of ourselves head on but here's the thing these aspects can't stay buried forever so we end up finding a scapegoat you know someone or something we can point to and say that's the problem right there it's like creating a boogeyman to take the heat allowing us to dodge the bullet of self-reflection for example picture a preacher who is always going on and on about the evils of pornography making sure everyone hears how bad it is only to find out he's wrestling with his own porn addiction. So what's happening is, he's projecting his personal battles onto others, using his loud objections as a way to not face his own dilemma directly. It's like he's picked pornography as the scapegoat, the other, to offload traits that he can't come to terms with, making himself feel a bit more at ease while sidestepping the real issue. So pay attention to anything you vehemently hate for exaggerated reasons. It could be shining a spotlight on your own inner struggles, your own taboos, or your desires you're not ready to face. You see that intense hate, that intense dislike often serves as a mirror reflecting parts of ourselves we are uncomfortable with or unwilling to confront directly. Shadow projection isn't just something we do on our own. It's all over the society too, especially on social media and throughout history. Think of social media as a modern day arena where everyone's expected to be the embodiment of kindness and correctness. 
but it's often those shouting about tolerance the most who end up calling out shaming or even canceling someone for not ticking all the right boxes according to their standards this whole cancel this whole cancel culture this whole cancel culture thing it's kind of like a group effort in avoiding our own flaws by finding someone else to blame creating a vicious cycle of mistrust and over judgment everyone's keeping an eye on everyone else making sure we all follow what's deemed correct and when someone steps out of line they are quickly pointed out not just as a way to correct them but also as a vent for our own bottled up critiques all while claiming that we are trying to do what's morally right throughout history we've seen whole societies point their shadows at those they see as enemies using this as a result for using this as a reason for conflict and violence take the nazis and their unfounded hatred of jews for instance this wasn't just about dislike it was about projecting their own deep fears and biases onto an entire group of people to justify the unthinkable horrors they committed you see by labeling someone as the enemy it's like they were giving themselves permission to let out the worst parts of themselves all while claiming they were on the right side of history even in our cultural obsession with movies about serial killers and cult leaders you see these movies feed our appetite for exploring the shadow from a very safe distance you see violent movies and even violent media in general serve as like a release valve for the deeper impulses we're not allowed to express in our often sanitized angelic daily lives it's like we're giving ourselves permission to dive into these darker themes from the safety of our couch all the while keeping our image as good upstanding people intact this kind of cultural obsession and cultural dive into the shadows let us deal with our fascination with the dark things right without ever having to admit that part of that darkness lives in us too james, james hollis the psychoanalyst while describing the shadow says quote how much evil intended or not has come from ordinary citizens being carried along on the tide of such energies what we have denied in ourselves will nonetheless be visited upon the world sooner or later sometimes we are left to pick up the pieces other times others have to pick it up for us and none of us are more dangerous than the righteous who uncritically believes they are right for they are the least capable of knowing the harm they bring with them into the world end quote another way the shadow finds expression is by possession have you ever noticed how being in a big group like at a concert or a rally can kind of sweep you up into feeling things more intensely right it's like one minute you're just you and the next minute you're part of this huge wave of energy you see at like a concert let's say a rock concert for example the vibe is so electric that you find yourself jumping and shouting along <laughs> totally getting caught up in a moment or let's say at a political rally or a protest you might get so wrapped up in the crowd's passion that you're chanting slogans with a conviction that surprises you later and don't get me started on like spot games you know being in the stands with other fans can get you cheering or booing louder than you ever would on your own couch this whole phenomenon is what you might call shadow by possession it's when the energy of everyone around us kind of takes over bringing out parts of us that usually stays hidden in this moment our own shadows blend in with the crowds leading us to express things we normally keep bottled up only in the name of being part of something bigger or part of a group now another way that the shadow also finds um, expression is when it is integrated right integrating our shadow is all about finding the right mix between the lighter and darker sides of ourselves it's this journey towards being our most authentic selves where we are cool with recognizing our flaws and can even have a laugh about them this kind of openness and realness doesn't just feel good for us it actually draws people in 
there's something about someone who is genuinely at ease with themselves that's just really magnetic on the flip side if someone hasn't quite gotten to grips with their shadow it can show they might come across as a little bit off or not quite themselves and surprisingly people pick up on that often without even realizing so people can smell bullshit you know so people can tell when somebody is 100 percent persona and wearing this mask all the time people can smell that you're not being authentic so kicking off the journey to embrace our shadow starts with actually noticing that it's there you know those moments when you react super strongly to something small or you find yourself getting really defensive those times can be a big clue that your shadow is trying to get your attention showing you bits of yourself that you haven't quite come to terms with yet it's like your emotions are dropping hints pointing out the areas where you might need to do a bit of digging and self-exploration paying attention to our projection is also crucial when we find ourselves vehemently disliking traits in others it's often a sign that we are projecting aspects of our own shadow onto them these are traits we possess but denying ourselves observing these projections let us learn more about our eating selves and what we need to integrate embracing the shadow involves accepting these hidden aspects as part of our identity it doesn't mean acting out every dark impulse but acknowledging that these traits and emotions are natural components of our being this acceptance can diminish the shadow aspect's power over us, reducing the need for projection or repression. So what's the big takeaway from all of this? Well, it's that facing and integrating our shadow isn't just some deep psychological exercise. It's about getting real with ourselves and embracing every part of who we are, the good, the bad, and everything in between. It's about understanding that those parts we try to hide or deny don't have to be our enemies. Instead, they can be powerful allies in our journey towards authenticity. By acknowledging and working with our shadows, we can find a more balanced, true version of ourselves, one that's not afraid to show vulnerability or imperfection. This, this doesn't just change how we see ourselves. It changes how we interact with the world and the people in it fostering deeper connections and a more genuine way of living. In the end, integrating our shadow is about breaking free from the mask we wear and the roles we play. It's about stopping the cycle of projection and denial that keeps us from truly connecting with others and ourselves. When we dare to explore and accept the full spectrum of our personalities, we open the door to a richer, more fulfilling life. So let's embrace the challenge. Let's dive into the depths of our inner world and let's emerge more whole, more integrated and more authentically us. It's a journey worth taking, not just for our peace of mind, but for the genuine connections and growth it brings into our lives. Thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, check out other ones in the library. Follow the page on Spotify and the YouTube channel, link in the description. I recently just created a TikTok account for the show. It's at Occasional Rant Pod. So give the show a follow on there too. I can't wait to connect with you on another episode. Take care and see you later.